Hi, and welcome to another video by Fortune Buchholz of Not Fortune's Fool. As promised, I'm continuing in my series of readings with Chiro Marchetti's Fan de Sieco Kipper, right? And so what we're going to do today is another grand tableau, but this time we're going to do it mixed, the Kipper with Chiro Marchetti's Gilded Reverie Lenormand deck. And the special edition or limited edition um, of the Kipper deck that most people have now uh, is exactly the same size as this commercial version of the uh, Lenormand deck. So they mix perfectly, they mix beautifully, they're the same size, they shuffle nicely together, it's really uh, no more difficult than shuffling a normal tarot deck. So it's, it'll be easy for everybody to handle and very easy for everyone to do. So those of you who have a Kipper deck and are interested in how you can mix it with Lenormand, how you can use your two decks together, or how you can use Lenormand as a, a, a kind of way to ease yourself into the full Kipper. Uh, these are all possible. There are also a lot of really great situations which uh, benefits from a mix. Of course, in the companion document that I wrote uh, for Chiro's Kipper deck, along with my two wonderful co-authors, I give an example of such a situation that has to do with custody of a dog in a divorce. And so that's really a great time to mix the deck because the Lenormand has a dog card, right? And the Kipper deck has cards pertaining to judges, courts, legal people. So uh, that just makes it, you know, very pertinent and it allows you to really focus on the point and address the situation very concretely and directly in a straightforward, accessible manner. So, you know, you'll often run into situations like that. Uh, and that's why I think mixing them can be beneficial. Although, of course, I love the system uh, of the Kipper by itself. I love it pure, as I've written. I love the, the Kippergeist, the emotional perfume or psychological uh, feeling that you get from t uh, using the Kipper deck. And there's a special kind of attachment that comes uh, from the Kipper. There's a special relationship. Sitters really like it, as I said, for its psychological and novelistic qualities. So, you know, I'm not going to take away or dismiss or pollute the uh, romance of the Kipper Geist, not at all. It's just there are times when it's very practical and very useful to mix the two. So, uh, you know, that is uh, what I'm going to show you here. Uh, so, <laughs> I suggest that what you do is if you have both decks, to go ahead, get them out, shuffle them together, get out your notebook, and, um, you know, be prepared to take a lot of notes to stop the video uh, when it comes to the static voiceover portion uh, and just lay your cards out as you see there in the video because in order to save time I'm not going to go through the whole 40 card you know layout and name all the cards in their positions because that would just take too long so uh, you know just go ahead stop the video uh, lay them out and then just kind of follow along and make your own notes or make your own observations you know for yourself as a journal and that way you can review that and and learn a lot. Uh, I like to use the uh, mixed deck on Kipper houses, uh, but you don't have to do that. There are times when you could use the Lenormand houses depending on the nature of the question. It's it's totally up to you and you know what seems right to you and your co-sitter, your client, you know the person that you are listening to and in this you know reading relationship with. Right, so you can uh, talk about that, or you can make the decision uh, as you find best. It's you know it's totally up to what's happening in that moment and what's right for the sitter's context, as always. So I'm going to be again uh, using a mixed deck on Kipper houses, and I think that that is just you know it's just going to work for this particular question, which is a relationship question. Uh, so as I have done in my previous videos, my line of five, my square of nine, and my other grand tableau. I'm going to stop the video here, go ahead and just go to a static voiceover portion and very quickly discuss the layout. I try not to make the videos too terribly long and I'm going to try to keep it, you know, to about 40 or 45 minutes. So thanks so much for your understanding. Again, I'm very grateful for everyone's support and your well wishes on Facebook and other social media. So, um, you know, I'm just very happy about that and keep them coming. I'm more than happy to address your questions and make sure that you know, we all have a wonderful experience of learning the Kipper together as a community because 
I think that's really what's most important is what we can do together in the card community as a community. Then the last thing I want to say before I go over to the to the voiceover part is that I am going away for Thanksgiving. I will be traveling in Europe and during that trip um, I will be uh, in Germany and visiting the, the German National Playing Card Museum on December 1st. So I'm not sure that it will be possible to take a lot of pictures there or to make any video there, but if it is, I will try to make even a short video, uh, if possible, with the head archivist, uh, Dr. Annette Kuger, and uh, that would be really great, but again, I'm just not sure what uh, they will allow and you know how Dr. Cougar feels about all of that. So we'll try to straighten that out. And if you see any videos for me in the next couple of weeks, it's probably going to be uh, short videos about cards that I can make in Europe and post, like maybe a star of 13. Uh, some people have asked me about that. Or as I said, if I get lucky at the German National Playing Card Museum, I, I'll try to post you know whatever I can from there. So thanks so much. Thanks for your attention and support. And, you know, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video in the voiceover portion. Thanks so much. Hi, it's Fortune and I'm back. And here we are on the other side with the uh, static image and the voice over so that we can just quickly and efficiently go through the grand tableau. As I said on the other side, the video portion, I am not going to go through the layout card by card and say which card is in which position. So if you'd like to follow along, uh, just grab your Lenormand deck and your own Kipper deck, stop the video right now, lay the cards out as you see on the screen, uh, and then get out your notebook and prepare to take notes so that way you know you'll all be ready and we can maximize the learning opportunity together so thanks so much for that now that said let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the client so the sitter's issue uh, was somewhat straightforward. He had been in a relationship for about two years. Uh, he works in the higher education field and he had been living with a gentleman for about a year. Uh, before they moved in together, they had dated for about a year. Uh, he very much wanted to get married. He was very marriage, family, and domestically minded. But his partner then decided that this was not really what he wanted. This wasn't a good situation for him at the time. So they parted ways in the spring. So now after, you know, some length of time, uh, he went to a party around Labor Day where he met a new gentleman who uh, was very intriguing to him and they had coffee and they started seeing each other on a semi-regular basis, maybe every couple of weeks they'd go out for coffee or dinner and then one thing led to another and now they are, you know, kind of seeing each other pretty regularly once or twice a week and they send each other texts on a, on a fairly regular basis. Um, our sitter feels that uh, there's a lot of potential with this person. Uh, he feels like he's really seriously falling in love, but because of his previous experience and his previous heartbreak, he is a little nervous about the situation. Uh, he, he wonders why his other friends have more easily been able to achieve the kind of domestic subtle lifestyle that uh, he seeks. And, and he just really wonders what he could do to make this relationship last and do everything he can to direct it in the way that he would like it to go, right? So I, I like this question because unlike many relationship questions, this is a question focused on what the sitter can do to take the relationship in a positive direction, right? And how he can avoid the mistakes that he himself made in the past. So this is a good question. It's not like what the other person is thinking or what the other person wants. It's totally focused on the sitter's own actions, which I feel is entirely appropriate. So let's go ahead and uh, dive in to the tableau. So uh, as you may recall from reading or listening to my previous video on the grand tableau, you know my first step is to look at the first three cards. So the first three cards here uh, the, is we have the Lenormand Rider, we have the Kipper Child, and we have the Lenormand Bouquet. So uh, this is really a very nice and positive opening, uh, you know, 
to uh, this tableau, to this picture, and it the sitter does confirm that, in fact, he got two texts, very sweet and romantic texts, from uh, his intended, or shall we say his beloved, um, today. So I think that's a really nice confirmation, and I think that tells us something that is highly positive for the overall tone of this tableau. So let's go ahead then and move on and read the corners. So again, we have the Lenormand Rider in one corner, and we have the Lenormand Lilies in another corner. Well, 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 well. So um, that tells you a lot about the chemical and physical attraction in this relationship. That's looking very positive. Then we move to card 15 uh, on the upper uh, far right. And then we go to the uh, card, um, you know, three, well, 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 the Kipper card three on the bottom left. So that diagonal pairing is certainly extremely hopeful, right? If this is this person's concern, right? So he's got uh, a, a, a very nice physical relationship and he has the lovers and marriage. So uh, this seems like you know, that his intuition that this is a relationship that could really develop in the way that he wants it to go it could, in fact, very much be on track. So obviously the sitter is very happy to see these cards. These are very wonderful and positive cards for this kind of question. Let's go ahead and um, look then to uh, the sitter's card. He identifies himself as card 28, which is the Lenormand man, and you see him here in the bottom row, right? And so let's look at the cards that are really above him here. You can see that the cards that are above him, what's on his mind, as we say, you know, kind of in the kipper, right, um, is card 18, this is the kipper child, uh, the Lenormand 19, the tower, and then we have the wealthy man who, in matters like this, in same-sex readings, right, I identify as the partner. So this is his intended, his beloved, right? And then we have card 25, Lenormand 25, the ring. So you have to say that um, this certainly suggests that this, you know, new relationship does have the potential for exactly the outcome that he would like. Uh, some people, you know, traditionally talk about, um, you know, t talk about the tower as meaning separation or divorce. And so um, what I'd like to, to note here is that uh, these two people don't live together, but they see each other often, right? So uh, I identify this card in this case as the person he doesn't live with, right? That That is, they are apart from each other, but they do have a lot of potential, and there is this kind of, you know, positive relationship. Certainly the ring sitting right above him is the kind of thing that, um, you know, you kind of want to see in a line like this, right? The line of the present, the column of the present. So when I ask the sitter how he feels about that card, the tower 19, he identifies it as a courthouse, which uh, I think um, is, is very interesting. And, and so he identifies that, of course, with going to get married. Um, and so I'm happy, you know, if that's how the sitter feels about that, I, I think it means, you know, now that they don't live together. But, you know, these cards are multivalent. These symbols are multivalent. And so I think both interpretations um, are possible. And I don't think that the sitter's interpretation is too much of a rosy scenario here based on um, the other cards. So I feel like you could look at that card in this context you know, uh, really uh, in both ways. So uh, then let's go ahead and um, talk about the cards that are, you know, uh, in front of the sitters. You can see the sitters at the front of the row, right? What would normally be the future, right? So I am not one of those people in a grand tableau who feels like this means, you know, the sitter has no future or, you know, anything particularly negative. It seems to me that often when I see 
uh, the significators in this position, then it means that the future is open to them and they have the ability to make of their future as they wish. So I, I think this is a very positive uh, position for this card. And again, I think that that is consistent with the overall positive tone we've seen in this tableau so far. So if we look, um, you know, at the sitter's uh, uh, past, you know, we, we can kind of see behind him, you know, we see 17, the Lenormand Stork, 35, right, uh, which is the Kipper pathway. So, you know, he, he did move from the place that he was living with his other partner, and they lived together, as I said, for about a year. So that would be, you know, moving after a year. And then Again, this the we have the end of the relationship or the loss of a relationship, and you can see that in the thief card, uh, Kipper twenty four, which sits next to Pathway, and then you can see that the journey from that, right? You know, so they did not take the journey that the sitter had wanted or that the sitter had hoped that was stolen from him or taken from him, so to speak. Uh, he, they did leave the house that they had together and um, they sold that. So that's sort of the past of the, uh, of the sitter. You can see uh, 27, uh, Kipper 27, next to Lenormand 4, right? So that's the sale and the, the income, the economic transaction, the sort of generic average transaction of the sale of their mutual house. So, you know, I, I just think that this card layout is uh, very pertinent and uh, on point to the sitter situation, and, and the sitter uh, definitely agrees agreed with that and confirmed that. So then let's go ahead and take a look at the square of nine around the sitter. Again, he does not have a complete square of nine, but I'm just going to mirror the cards here. So I'm going to bring down the rider, the Lenormand card one from the top row. I'm going to bring down the Kipper child from the top row and I'm going to bring down the Lenormand bouquet from the top row. And then I am going to take Kipper 27, unexpected income, and I'm gonna move that in front of the sitter. So there, once we do that mirroring, right, to sort of fill that in, we, we do top to bottom and side to side, right? We uh, immediately see that this is possibly one of the most, um, lovely and uh, romantic, uh, you know, layouts we could imagine. We have uh, Kipper 3, marriage, with the Lenormand 9, the bouquet. This just, just is just really beautiful for a, a, a situation like this, right? Um, we have card 31, bad health. Now, let's talk for a moment about Kipper 31, right? So Kipper 31 traditionally you know, is called short-term illness, but because in the Kipper it's the only card that has like a bed in it, it kind of also acquired a secondary um, meaning, you know, the bed card, shall we say, and and so it can kind of uh, indicate a, a physical and amorous relationship as well as just, you know, ill health. And then we see that, um, you know, we can pair this when we pair the corners diagonally, Kipper 31 with you know, the Normand one, the writer. So he, definitely the texts that he got uh, today, as he said earlier, were very, shall we say, romantic, maybe even slightly sexy. So um, again, this, uh, this just all looks, looks fantastic for one's romantic aspirations. If we uh, look then at his column of the present, the center column in the square of nine, right, we can see that we have above the sitter, uh, 25, Lenormand 25, which is the ring card, definitely the card of a relationship. And then below him, we have uh, the Kipper child, Kipper 18, again, meaning new or young. And this is exactly what he has. He has a new young relationship with a lot of uh, potential. And uh, the, let's shall we say, the physical and chemical, the romantic piece, it's all there for him. So, um, Again, this just looks really, really positive for a relationship reading. Um, so let's uh, talk uh, about uh, pairing the diamond, right, uh, around 
our significator here. So that would mean that we would take, again, the Lenormand 25, the ring card, and we would look at it uh, in the context of Kipper 27, unexpected income. Of course, unexpected income can not only mean, you know, getting some money, it can also mean domestic affairs, household accounts. So again, this uh, seems to me like a, a relationship that besides having a lot of romantic and physical and, you know, chemical passion to it, could also be a relationship based on practical matters, day-to-day -day matters, uh, a shared bank account. This is the kind of settled, domestic, everyday relationship you know, that component of it that he is definitely looking for. Uh, again, when we pair 27, Kipper 27, unexpected income with Kipper 18 child, it's new. This is still new to him, right? 18, Kipper 18 plus Lenormand 17. So we have child and stork here, right? The Lenormand stork, this again uh, is a physical, uh, a physical move. Um, Generally, if this were an opposite sex reading, I would say when we see child and stork, that definitely has the, connota the connotation of a, of a family, um, definitely of children. Um, and I, I don't read this uh, any differently for a same-sex reading. So I definitely think that the kind of settled domestic relationship with, you know, a daily life, possibly having children, all of these things do appear to be possible in these cards. And when the sitter, so when the sitter feels this possibility, uh, it does seem as if this could be, you know, an objective and rational feeling that he has and is not just, you know, uh, wishful thinking. But the question that the sitter was really focused on, let me go ahead and put the cards back here for just a moment into the original configuration. The question the sitter was focused on, though, was how he could, you know, what he could do to nurture this relationship, right? And not uh, have it sort of dissolve on him as his other one had. So this leads us to ask uh, some questions here of him in an open-ended manner about what really happened with that last relationship. And so uh, he felt, feels in retrospect, you know, now that it has been several months since that uh, dissolved, that his pressure or his desire to just really go ahead and get married was maybe too much for the person that he was living within, that he wasn't really in that space, he wasn't ready yet, and he, he worried that he had just subtly or overtly been rushing the, his partner you know, towards marriage, and maybe that was really not what he should have done. So I thought that was a brilliant insight and uh, really was an excellent piece of self-examination. It was very thoughtful. It was very courageous. It was a very honest thing to admit about yourself. And that also helps us look at the other cards as we go forward and see what, what he can do to prevent, you know, this kind of thing happening again and to let this new relationship, which does seem to have so much potential of being the kind of relationship that he wants, to develop fully and, you know, be the most of what it can be, right? Of course, you can't, you know, his partner, who we see here again, as I said, in Kipper 13, right, who I like to call the millionaire, of course, does have free will, and, and he could also change his mind or, or, you know, he could emotionally decide that he's, you know, not ready for this kind of commitment. Um, but still, our sitter can do, you know, some things in order to create a positive space where these kinds of hopes can flourish and everyone's emotional needs, you know, are met. So uh, let's go ahead then and look at the two cards here that I think recommend, uh, recommend what sitters can do. So in a Lenormand layout, right, I would turn to card 33 to see what the sitter can do, you know, what are his actions that can unlock and open the situation. And in a Kipper deck, I would look, of course, at card, uh, you know, 34, what hands-on things that you should be doing uh, in order to, you know, achieve things in the direction that you would like and to make things come to a positive fruition. So let's go ahead and start uh, with the uh, key card, right, the, the Lenormand 33, which we see here in the top row. Again, it does not have its full square of nine. So uh, let's go ahead 
and um, you know, move these cards up. Again, I'm going to mirror the cards. So I'm going to move up card 24, Kipper 24, Thief, Kipper 10, Journey, and the Lenormand 4, The House. And then I'm just going to read the square of nine around that, as I have read the square of nine around uh, the significators card. Um, so uh, here's, here's what we see, right? So we see the sitter's previous concern uh, stated quite uh, boldly, right? We have the thief, right, 24, which uh, Kipper 24, which goes with Kipper 23, the courthouse. This rush to get married, this rush to the courthouse, he shouldn't do that, right? If, if, he, keeps, if he keeps rushing, right, he will lose his dream of getting married here. Of course, you know, you never want to rush another person. You never want to put that kind of pressure on another person. And you want to ask yourself a lot about what your own emotional needs are that you may feel a need or an anxiety that causes you to put uh, other people under that kind of pressure. And that's a very profound piece of self-examination, you know, which you can talk with the sitter about for a very long time. Um, then we also, uh, you know, want to take a very strong look at the other corner, which is the Norman Four, the house, right? And... Uh, Lenormand 26, the book, That Which is Unknown. So, you know, he really should kind of back off on the whole living together and, you know, back off on the whole pressure to get married. He shouldn't rush. He's got to give this new relationship more time. After all, they only met around Labor Day. Here it is, you know, just really the middle of November. So this is still a very new relationship, and although the sitter, of course, has a lot of really great feelings, and they seem to be involved, certainly in a very strong romance, very passionate, very romantic, very physical, you know, you still have to let the emotional side develop, and you have to really uh, let that connection flower, which, you know, always takes time. So uh, then let's go ahead and, and look at the diamond around the key card. Again, this would be... Um, Kipper 10, Journey. Kipper 6, the what I like to call the barrenness, uh, the good lady in the traditional Kipper in which Chiro and his Kipper calls mature female. So, you know, if we look at those together, I do ask him what he knows about his uh, new partners or his new beloved's family life, right? You know, what is his relationship with his family? Has he met his mother you know, is he, how is he planning to get to know his family? Do they have plans for the holidays? Will he be invited to his partner's house for Thanksgiving? You know, what, or the holidays, what, what does that look like? Have they talked about spending Thanksgiving together? And so um, they are not spending Thanksgiving together at this time, the sitter replies, uh, but he is hoping that he will be invited for Christmas and he would like to invite him to Christmas at his house if, you know, that seems comfortable and appropriate, you know, to his partner. So I think that's something that they could talk about after Thanksgiving if they feel like this relationship is, you know, on a level where they could, you know, start to incorporate their families, but definitely to approach that you know, with some care, right? Uh, then we see uh, card six, Kipper six, uh, paired with uh, Lenormand 35, of course, the anchor card, the card of hope, right? Uh, since the Lenormand is originally the game of hope, this is the card of stability. So I, I ask, since we're talking about family. I ask him what he knows, again, about his uh, beloved or new partner's uh, parents. And they have, in fact, been married for a long time. He comes from a very positive uh, background, not the least bit dysfunctional. So that, you know, that seems very good. And then um, we see 35 uh, paired with the kipper, uh, 25. So we see the anchor paired with high honors. Again, um, 
so when we see, you know, the high honors, we think of things that are, are promoting, things that are beneficial, things that are extremely successful. So again, his beloved's parents have been married for a very long time. They have a very lovely marriage, he thinks. His partner speaks very well of his parents. As I said, he comes from a good home. So that kind of, you know, role model of having a good family relationship, having good marriages, these things are definitely in his uh, intended background. And so, again, I think that this is all uh, very positive. And we see, uh, again, high honors, Kipper 25, and we pair that with Kipper 10 uh, journey. So that looks like that, you know, again, there could be possibly a trip to meeting his family and you know maybe that would be something that could be done for Christmas or for New Year's so that again that all looks like something that would be um, you know a good thing to do if we kind of want to sum up the square of nine so don't rush anything you know don't put on any undue pressure to, to move in together, you know, meet the family and really get to know the family in, its, in the appropriate time frame. So, you know, these were things that he admitted he had not done in his previous relationship, which was a little more rushed. He really wasn't close to his partner's family. His partner didn't have a really the best relationship with his family. So this is a different situation. Of course, he shouldn't be ruled by his past experience, but he should really focus on, you know, taking common sense and, and respectful actions, right, uh, to respect people's um, need to slow down, to take time, to explore the emotional landscape. And that's really, I think, a, a lot of uh, good, good advice. So let's go ahead and then turn our attention to the other card of, of hands-on action, right, which would be Kipper 34 or Occupation. I'm just going to go ahead and move the mirrored cards back into place. All right. So if we look at the square of nine around that, right, once we put the cards back down, from where we had mirrored them around key, we now have a square of nine for occupation. So um, let's go ahead and look at this square of nine. We can see that this square of nine has the Norman 22, right, the ways, again, uh, with card 10, Kipper 10, the journey, right? So there's going to be a decision about a journey or a trip. So um, some kind of voyage, either physical or emotional, right? And then we have card number four, uh, court, you know, courtship. Well, that's a very, um, you know, interesting uh, and positive card, uh, which could be understood, you know, sort of literally, but they are also, you know, having a meeting. These, these two people are new, so they're having all kinds of, you know, um, uh, meetings and, and, and joinings, right, and uh, these kinds of things happening on 35. The other diagonal card is Kipper 35, the pathway, right? So this is a long journey. Again, the pathway usually indicates a year or even two, right? So it seems to me that this, that this romance to be successful is he really should as I said, stretch it out instead of thinking they're going to, you know, move in together and then they're going to get married in a short time as he really needs to, to lengthen out his timeline and to let this, you know, relationship and this process uh, of meeting each other, of knowing each other, of getting together, you know, really take its own time. And that could be more, you know, than a year. It could be more than two years. And he should just relax into that and let it, you know, develop in a normal way way as it would. So let's go ahead and look at the square of nine, you know, that are is around the occupation card. So that would be an interesting card here, a challenging card. This would be Lenormand 21 Mountain, a card of obstacles, right? And then we have a uh, card 16, Kipper 16, his thoughts or one's thoughts, which Chiro just calls thoughts. So uh, when we look at that, you know, um, we, we want to talk to the sitter really about what obstacles are in his mind, 
right, to this relationship and how he can take concrete action to avoid the obstacles, to ease their communication, to really sit down and think objectively and positively about how to nurture this relationship and not just suffer from anxiety, right? The anxiety that he doesn't have what his other friends who are already married have, that he has to rush to have that. Uh, this sort of negative uh, kind of thought about his own relationship potential, right? He should, you know, he should be aware that those negative and blocking thoughts, you know, have arisen in him, but that doesn't mean that you know, he needs to just live with them. What he does, and here uh, I think this is very nice, we see Kipper 16 thoughts paired here with Kipper 24 thief. He needs to remove them, right? He needs to lose them, literally. And so he can do that, of course, by, you know, giving the relationship time, uh, you know, really focus 